morning glory sleep bright with the dawning of hope in Jerusalem. Fold at the grave closed to filled with light as the angels announce Christ is risen. Seek our salvation plan brought in love, born in pain, pain and sacrifice. Fulfilled in Christ the man, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. See Mary weeping, where is he laid? As in sorrow she turns from the empty tomb. Here's a voice speaking, calling her name. It's the Master, the Lord, raised to life again. The voice that stands the ears, speaking life, stirring hope, bringing peace to us, will sound till he appears, for he lives, Christ is risen from the dead. of days through the Spirit who calls faith with certainty, honor and blessing, glory and praise to the King throne with power and authority. Happy Resurrection Day. I'd like to start with a quote from C.H. Spurgeon that I believe will set the theme for today's message. Listen carefully. No scene in sacred history ever gladdens the soul like the scene on Calvary. Nowhere does the soul find such comfort as on that very spot where misery reigned, where woe triumphed, where agony reached its climax. Our comfort is not simply found in what happened on the cross, but also in what happened after the cross when Christ rose from the grave. I wonder today if you would rejoice with me that Jesus is alive. And may the truth of the resurrection comfort every single one of us today. I want you to find in your Bible John chapter 11. John chapter 11 is a text that I have been wading my way through this week and finding some rich truths that have really ministered to my heart. I think they'll minister to yours as well. We're going to slowly make our way through these verses, seeking to arrive at one particular text that gives us our first point today. Notice with me in verses 1 through 4 that there was a sick man by the name of Lazarus. He's in the town of Mary and his sister Martha. And the Bible tells us in verse 3, Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Now, note verse 4. When Jesus heard that, he said, This sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. When you and I are reading Scripture, it is always helpful for us to see if we can recognize in the passage what is God's goal. And a verse like this teaches us that one of God's goals in this particular situation was that there would be a particular end to this story. Some thought, well, Lazarus will get sick, and the end of the story is he will die. 
Christ says, no, the end of the story, the ultimate goal of this story, is that Lazarus will be sick, then die, and that God would be glorified. According to this text, as we'll read later, one of the ways that Jesus, the Son of God, is glorified is that Jesus takes he who is dead and brings him back to life. You and I continue on into the text in verses 5 and following. And we find ourselves in verse 12 where the disciples said unto the Lord, If he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking of rest in sleep. Then said Jesus in verse 14 unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there. To the intent ye may believe, nevertheless, let us go unto him. Now, I challenged you early on in this text to read a text and look for God's primary goal. This verse that I just read to you gives a secondary goal that God oftentimes has. He says, listen, I am glad that I did not make it there in time so that Lazarus dies. And then he says this, and your strength is found to grow stronger because your faith is tested. What a wonderful truth that there's a secondary goal that Christ has in all of this. He has the same secondary goal in our lives. He wants to be glorified and he wants to grow our faith. We continue on into this text. In verse 20, the Bible says, Then Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary sat still in the house. Verse 21, then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. If you're prone to write in your Bible, can I encourage you next to verses 21 and 22 to scribble into the margin of that passage, frustration plus faith. I am so thankful for this passage because I can identify with it and probably you can too. Frustration and faith are dwelling in the same person. You hear the frustration as she says, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But the next verse gives us the equation and says there is also faith here. But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Sometimes you and I can be frustrated that what God is doing doesn't make sense to us or the timing with which what God is doing is off our schedule. But make sure in your frustration you never lose faith in God. Her faith is fully in God. She's trusting Him. She knows that He's able to do something. Now note the landing spot. This is where I'm trying to get us to. It's found in verse 25 when the Lord says, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? Now, star, verse 25. Just put a star there and note that this is one of the great I am statements in the book of John. If you were to look at Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John side by side, you would find that Matthew, Mark, and Luke all contain more miracles than John does. But what the Gospel of John lacks in miracles it makes up for in I am statements. Scattered across the book, you'll find these I am statements, such as this, I am the resurrection and the life. Again, I'm going to ask you to write in your Bible, or if you're taking notes here for a moment, I want you to write down three values from the I Am statements. If the book of John is going to include so many of these, we need to know what to do when we see them. There's three of them. Number one, they're going to teach us the deity of Jesus Christ. They're going to make sure that the reader knows and believes beyond a shadow of a doubt that Jesus Christ is not just a man. He is the Son of God. Number two, the I Am statements are going to heighten our desire for Christ. When you read that He is the bread of life, there's a hunger. I want 
Him. There's a third value, and that is they strengthen our dependence on Christ. When death seems to reign, and there are so many things around us that bring sorrow, doesn't it strengthen our dependence upon Him to hear, as the words describe here, that He is the resurrection and the life? Again, note with me, He says, I am the resurrection and the life. Today, on this Easter Sunday, we are celebrating an event. An event in which God looks down into the tomb of His Son, Jesus Christ, who died for your sins and for mine. And God raises Him, Jesus, to life. We are celebrating an event today. But I want us to be very, very careful. This I am statement teaches us, number one today, that our celebration ultimately is in the person of the resurrection. Yes, we're rejoicing that God raised Jesus to life. But let's never forget the ultimate celebration today is in the person of the resurrection. It's Jesus. I have an anniversary that's coming up here soon. And when I make my way to the store, hopefully, to find that anniversary card, I'm not looking for an anniversary card that says something along the lines of, I love the day that I committed my life to you. I'm not looking for a card that says something like, I am so thankful for that day when I said I do. In fact, the anniversary card that I'm going to be looking for is going to be more in line with, I love you. Because as we celebrate an anniversary, I'm not celebrating a day. I'm really celebrating that on that day, a person, my wife, married me. I'm celebrating a person. In the book of John, we find a statement like, I am the resurrection and the life. But like I said, there's so many more I am statements. I want to show you one that really helps us celebrate Christ. Go with me to John chapter 14 and verse 6. John 14 and verse 6. This verse, this I am, is really going to help us today rejoice in the person of the resurrection. The Bible says this, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Again, I sure hope you have your pen today because I'm really asking you to mark up your Bible. Next to verse 6, would you note two things? Would you note something to celebrate about Jesus today? Is that he is the singular way to God? It says this, Jesus saith unto him, I am the way. And no man cometh any other way. He is the singular way. And then note number two, according to verse six, Jesus is a sufficient way to God. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. My dear friends, if you have received Jesus Christ, you received the singular way to God. And if you've received Jesus Christ by faith today, you receive the sufficient way that makes it possible for you to have a relationship with God. A number of years ago, I heard about an African Muslim that rejected his religion and put his full faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. A man came to him and said, so what made you reject your religion and believe solely in the Lord Jesus Christ? And that man very wisely and accurately and somewhat artistically painted this picture. He said, it's as if I came to a fork in the road and I had two ways I could go. To go this way was to follow a man who was dead. And to go this way was to follow one who was dead and then made alive. I chose, he said, to follow life. Today, on this Easter Sunday, we are celebrating the person 
of the resurrection, Jesus Christ, who died and was raised to life for you and for me. Point number two today, we see the comfort is in the purpose of the resurrection. Our comfort is in the purpose of the resurrection. We're staying in the Gospel of John. Go now with me to chapter 10 and verse 10. John chapter 10 and verse 10. Listen to what the Bible says. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. I hope you still have your pen in your hand because I want you again to write in the margin of your Bible two purposes. Two purposes to the resurrection. Number one, it is to give us life. If I was today to spell life, I would spell life. H-O-P-E. It's hope. When God gives you and I life through His resurrection, he gives us hope. It's a hope that my sins have been forgiven. It's a hope that my relationship with God has been established and no force or man or situation can change that. It's thirdly a hope that my life with God will continue into eternity for all of eternity. One of the great purposes of the resurrection is to give us life but again, secondly, notice the secondary purpose is to give us abundant life. Abundant life. This means that the life that I now live right now as a Christian, it has a greater purpose than just this life. This means that my life is being changed daily to be more like Christ. The abundant life is not just that God looks at a sinner and saves them by faith and says, I'm going to give you the hope of heaven. He says, I'm also going to change you daily to be more like him. It means that my life can have fullness of joy here on earth, regardless of what's happening around me, regardless of what's happening to me. Every single one of us as believers can have a fullness of joy because of one of the great purposes of the resurrection, to give us abundant life. I was watching the news and some of the situations that are happening on the East Coast and particularly in New York City. And a man was commenting as he observed the multitudes of people who were dying. He sadly said, I see all of these people in the land of the living making their way to the land of the dying. As I've thought about that phrase, and I compare it to what the Bible says. The Bible actually says it differently. You and I live in the land of the dying. But because of the resurrection, we have the opportunity to head towards the land of the living. The great purpose of the resurrection is to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. Thirdly today, our confidence, our confidence is in the power of the resurrection. Have you ever wrestled with Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10? Paul says this, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable unto his death. What about that phrase, and the power of his resurrection? Again, I hope you have your pen, and I hope that you'll write something. I want you to write a cross-reference next to this verse. The cross-reference is 2 Timothy 3.15. 2 Timothy 3, verse 15. Now, as you're turning there, I want you to remember that the word power that is found in Philippians 3.10, it is a Greek word of which we often see translated and, and moved into an English word that we get dynamite from. So it is appropriate to say that there is a power, almost like a dynamite type power in his resurrection. But that definition of the word and the use of that word doesn't always help me practically apply it. 
until I read 2 Timothy 3.15 and listen to what it says. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, now underscore it, which are able. Same word found in Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10, translated power. Which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All right, let's go back in our thoughts to Philippians 3 and verse 10. What does it mean and to know the power of his resurrection? Take how it's translated in 2 Timothy 3 and verse 15 and think of it this way. The power is that power that makes things possible. It's the power that is able to make things possible. So Paul is saying, I want to know that power that makes things possible. My question is, what does the resurrection make possible? A couple of things. It makes it possible for each one of us to live with God for all of eternity. If Jesus had not died and then been risen from the grave, you and I would have no hope of living eternally with God forever. I hope on this Easter, if you are watching this or listening to this, that you would very, very carefully consider your own life and ask yourself, where is my faith? Where have I placed it? And if you have placed your faith anywhere other than Jesus Christ, and Him alone to save you, then you've put your faith in the wrong place. One of the greatest things you could do on this Easter Sunday is to make sure that your faith is moved to Jesus Christ and Him alone to save you. And one of the things that the resurrection makes possible is that you can live with God for all of eternity. Through Christ. Some of the other things that it makes possible is it makes it possible for us to live victoriously. This current situation that we're in and everything that is happening around us does make living for the Lord obediently and in holiness super difficult. For some of you, this past week was filled with more defeat than it was victory. And I would hope that on this Easter Sunday, you would not give up this next week from trying to do right, trying to please the Lord, because the resurrection makes it possible for you and for me to live victoriously. I want you to go with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and note with me two more possibilities. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And in verse 14, after a lengthy discussion about the value of the resurrection, there's a question that is asked, and if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain? He's saying, listen, because of the resurrection, it is possible that preaching Christ works. We can't meet in churches like we normally do. There's so many things that are different these days, but never underestimate the power of the preaching of Christ. Churches scattered across the world today are unable to have some of the special music we would be accustomed to. They're not able to sing together in corporate gatherings. For many, we're not able to take the Lord's Supper as we would so love to do on this day. But don't be discouraged that, in a sense, God can't work because we can't do those things. Instead, rejoice with me that because of the resurrection, there is the possibility for preaching to work. God can still save souls through the preaching of Christ. Listen again to what C.H. Spurgeon said. He said, when we preach Christ crucified, we have no reason to stammer or stutter or hesitate or apologize. There is nothing in the gospel of which we have any cause to be ashamed. 
this week because of the resurrection? Would you, with great boldness, share Christ with your family, your friends, your co-workers, your neighbors, to a world around us that is suddenly sobered by the reality of death? Let's be the ones that tell them on this Easter that Easter is about the celebration of a person, Jesus Christ, who died for their sins and declared himself to be, I am the resurrection and the life. That's our message. Jesus lives and he can save them. Finally today, there is a fourth possibility that I want to plant before you. The resurrection makes it possible for you and for me to continue steadfastly. In 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 58, he says, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Some of the shiny of this season has definitely rubbed off. There was a few days early on in which there was great enthusiasm that people could stay home and not go to work or that school would be done at home or I don't have to go out. But now things are starting to wear on us. We're getting tired of this season. And if we're not careful, we start to give up on some of the basics that God would require of us. In fact, it, it's super easy for us to become careless instead of careful to really walk with the Lord. On this Easter Sunday, I want you to know that because of the resurrection, it is possible for you and I to remain steadfast, unmovable, not just doing the work of the Lord, but abounding in the work of the Lord. Stay faithful. Stay steadfast. Don't quit. Because the resurrection makes it possible to endure. A few years ago, our family was ministering in Wyoming. And after a long week of ministry, we decided to load up and to slowly make our way through Wyoming up into Montana and to take a long trip back home. What we didn't account for is that we would be pretty weary from that week of ministry. And so we enjoyed a couple of days of touring and seeing some things, but we became very weary of living on the road and we decided we just, we want to get home. And so we began to drive. Initially, we were going to stay over a night or two in hotels and kind of take our time making our way back, but we were so longing to be back in our own bed and in our own home that we found ourselves just driving straight through. During the night, I was pumping gas into a car and the man across from me said, so where are you coming from? And I told him where we'd been and told him about the last couple of days of driving. And he said, wow, you're really keeping the pedal to the metal. I said, I am because I can't wait to get home. In a sense, the resurrection makes it possible for all of us to have the hope of a home in heaven. And because of that home and its certainty, keep the pedal to the metal. Stay steadfast, always abounding in the work of the Lord because of the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, I pray that today you would help everyone listening and watching this message to examine their own heart. If they have never received the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior, I pray that on this Easter Sunday, they would put their faith in Jesus Christ alone. I pray also for those who have received Christ, that you would help us today to celebrate the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to remember that your grand purpose in the resurrection was to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. And because of your resurrection, it is possible for us to endure. Help every believer listening and watching to keep the pedal to the metal. May we be found faithful for Christ.
in your name. Amen.